With the help of AI, Hello. we recently transformed our Amazon listing images. And in this video, we're gonna share with you our first-hand experience going through this process, showing you all the AI tools and the exact prompts that we used to generate these images. Now, don't worry, if you wanna try this out on your own products, you don't need this guy, but instead you can use the four tools that we did. Midjourney, Adobe Firefly and Photoshop, and Canva. But before you start generating images, it's important to research your competitors and pick out a few images that you think are working well and then use those for inspiration. For example, this is what we did here. We created a Word document with our current images on the left side and some inspiration images from our competitors on the right hand side. And essentially this was where we just sourced all of our information from. We found competitors who had really good lifestyle images or just images that we wanted to replicate with the use of AI. So. Lenny, let's start on the image that matters most, our main image. What did we do here? Yeah, so like you said, we've talked about this before. Your main image is so important. This is what people see on the search results page, and it's one of the main reasons that they'll click onto your listing. So the reason that we wanted to actually make a change to it is when we were looking up bamboo marshmallow sticks on Amazon, we saw that a lot of the images felt pretty similar or very similar to the one that we currently have. And so we wanted to make ours stand out and the idea that we came up with was to add sort of a prop where we've got this skewer on the side with some food on it. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, adding a prop to your main image is sort of a gray area on Amazon, but as long as you're not trying to confuse the customer, a lot of sellers are getting away with it. As you can see here, there's a few sellers right here, these last three, they're using props. And of course, as a buyer, I'm not thinking I'm getting the marshmallow and it looks like chocolate with it. Um, so it is a gray area. However, a lot of sellers are using it and we assume that the click-through rates are gonna be a little bit better using a prop. So that's why we at least wanna test it out. If we get declined or denied, then we'll just revert and back to our old image or try with a different angle um, without a prop. But we wanna try it first with a prop. Exactly. So now let's talk about how we actually went about this. So the first tool that we used here was Adobe Photoshop and using the generative fill feature. Now, a quick note here, this feature is currently only available in the beta version of Photoshop, but in the future, it's gonna be rolled out to all versions. And it's really simple to use. You just open your image here and then you pick one of these selection tools. I'd recommend the lasso tool because that way you can kind of draw whatever shape you want. So you just come in and kind of draw the section where you want to generate something. So just draw that crude shape, click on generative fill, and now you just describe what you want to see. So maybe I'll put wooden skewer with marshmallow and we're just going to hit generate. It's really that simple and it's incredibly fast. You'll see that it's going to be done here in just a moment. You're going to see that we're going to have three different options that we can look at and <laughs> awesome. this is our first option here. And so let's cycle through. That's option okay. number two and option number bad. three. That one isn't too bad. Now, if you don't like the options that you get here, you can just simply hit generate again, and it's going to create another three options for you. And really, this is just the process. Just keep generating until you get an option you like, or if you feel like it's not going in the direction that you want, you can also change up your prompt here. So mm. let's just take a quick look at the, the new generation. So we've got one, two, okay. three, and it is actually giving me what I want, a wooden skewer with mm. marshmallow. I don't know if it makes any difference to say a single marshmallow. Yeah. Now with a lot of AI tools, it really comes down to the prompts that you give it. And it does a lot of the execution work for you, but the work you have to do is figuring out the prompt and experimenting with different prompts. Yeah. And actually, it looks like that change oh, that's nice. did, did the trick. So now we've got these uh, three new ones here that, uh, or at least these first two here, are very similar to what I asked for. Now, I've really enjoyed playing around with Photoshop recently. You can use other tools as well to expand the canvas and use AI to recreate parts of the image and, and build out an image. But what I do really like about Photoshop is that every time you generate something, it's on its own layer. So that means I can turn it off and on. I could say, turn that off and I can kind of save this as like, let's say option number one, and I can do another generation and it sort of saves all of these options 
separately. It also kind of means that like, let's say I'm happy with this section, but you know, I want to work on another part of the image. Um, I can generate something there. And again, they're all on separate layers, meaning that you can just kind of keep iterating on your image, but you've got all of your options saved. Now, what we did here for our final image, I wanted to show you the actual images that we're going to potentially go with here is Using Lenny's last prompt, we, we got the sticker already. We had a marshmallow. My marshmallow gave me a little bit of something different. I think it's fun, actually. And it, we originally <laughs> wanted to go with this image. But then I thought, what if we just lasso the marshmallow and then just change it up? So I think I did roasted marshmallow. And what that got by clicking generate is a roasted marshmallow. Mm. And it was really good. Like, we love this. And then we sort of just like went down a rabbit hole of like, all right, what about like a chocolate covered marshmallow? <laughs> And then what about just like a strawberry? Because red is really vibrant. It'd be really cool to have that as our main image. But then, you know, we did try to make the strawberry a little bit smaller and realistic. But then we went with hot dog. Hot dog would be funny. But the one <laughs> we're going to go with actually is chicken kebab. And mm. believe it or not, like, I think this is going to be our strongest one just because it's different. All of our competitors have a marshmallow. And this is going to be completely different. And I think stand out, it's gonna give the the, sh the shopper an idea for a way to use this. And a lot of people are using our sticks for chicken kebabs. And we found that out just by looking at our reviews, looking at our competitors' reviews. Sometimes you'll see in the images what exactly they're using it for. And it shocked us that they're using it for more than just the normal uh, marshmallow. And this is gonna be fun. We might even test out all these different food types <laughs> and do a case study for you guys. So let us know if that's something you wanna see. But we're excited to go with this one image. Now, one other quick image tip here. Another reason that I like this final image uh, and also like the burnt marshmallow compared to the original one is the problem with the original marshmallow was it had very low contrast. It was like mm. pink and white and the white in particular blends into the background. And so immediately I really liked the burnt marshmallow. Yeah. It stands out more because it's got a lot stronger contrast. Good and point. I think that's also one of the great things about the final image that we've got there with the, um, the, the whole kebab there um, is that it's got strong contrast. So it just makes yeah. the image pop. So if you can ever um, make your images pop by just having that increased contrast and that's like a good little thing to keep in mind. It's a great tip. Now, before we completely finished the image, there was one more thing that we did. So we took this main image and we went and uploaded it to our listing. And what we found is that it looked a little bit different or the size or shape of it looked a little bit different because all the current images on our listing here are all in a square shape. And, you know, currently this one was a little bit different now. So, um, I took it back into Photoshop and I wanted to make it square to match all of the others. So it was pretty straightforward. I just changed the canvas size here so that it was square. Because if we try to just make this square right now, you're gonna have all of this negative space at the top. Right. So I wanted to get rid of that. So I just simply move this guy at the top and then just using the exact same process that Jake just uh, talked through, selected the bottom here, went to generative fill. And now I just put in something like wooden skewers. It's just so sophisticated that it'll just figure it out. I don't have to be overly complicated with my prompt. And again, might have to generate a few times. I think when I originally did it, I had to do it four or five times. Interesting. So that actually looks kind of cool. It's not what we want, um, but it actually doesn't look oh, yeah. that bad. It's doing a good so, job of expanding it downwards, which is what we're looking yeah, for. Yeah. And to me, it looks quite realistic. Um, mm -hmm. It's not the image that we want, but it I think it looks pretty good. But well, this is what happened the first time, right? Like we generated yes. it like three or four times and eventually found it and then did a little bit of tweaking, right? Like it, it wasn't perfect the first time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I do remember that we were getting it in a lot of jars and, and things. I don't, th I'm trying to remember if we adjusted the prompt. I don't think we did. I think maybe we just, just kept, kept generating and then one of the prompts was just perfect. One thing you could do too is if you find one that's close enough, you can accept that prompt like this yeah, and then run another um, lasso tool over to regenerate it again. And so you're just getting closer and closer to your end goal here. Exactly. So let's just try that real quick and see what yeah, happens. So I'd say go. this one's really close and then we just select that generative fill and I don't know, maybe we'll just try the same prompt again mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens. This is what I really love, Letty, about Photoshop is you don't have to be a Photoshop wizard like Lenny. You can be <laughs> a caveman like me and I just use Canva. I have no Photoshop experience 
And you can just write what Lenny just did there. He just said like remove it. Right. And I love that about this this new to uh, generative fill feature. Like that's doing a really good job right yeah, now. Yeah. So now we're even we're even closer here. And so you could actually use some other tools to sort of remove this, or, or you could just keep regenerating. You have to kind of like keep playing with the generations. But as you can see, it it happens so quickly um, that just with like a little bit of time, uh, you, you'll get the results that you're after. And so after playing around with it for a little while, this was the final image that we generated for our main image. Okay, so that's our main image. Now let's move on to image number two. On the left-hand side is our image. We are calling out that our sticks have extra strength and we really liked our competitors were showing that strength. So rather than telling they were showing, however, with our photo and with the competitor's photo, we realized that we're just telling them the feature that it is extra strong. We're not giving them the benefit of why you want it to be extra strong. And we've identified through looking at a bunch of images and also competitor reviews that being far away from the fire was really important while still maintaining the food. So like in this example, a hot dog isn't making the stick bend too much and break. So we wanted to show the benefit of being extra long and strong, but really prioritizing the fact that it's extra long. And I wanna show you how we did this because it's a little bit different than our last method, but we're still using Adobe. The tool that we used here was Adobe Firefly and again, the beta version of it. Um, this right now is actually completely free. You can just sign up for the beta depending on when you're watching this. And it's super simple. It's all text to image generation. What I did here is I used a prompt hand holding a long wooden kebab skewer away from a bonfire pit. And again, the idea is to try to show how far away that you can hold these things from the fire and it's still maintaining uh, whatever food is on it. Now, real quick, the only two modifications I did was I made sure it was in landscape mode. I don't think it really would matter too much if you're in landscape, square, or widescreen. Maintained photo instead of art. And then I came down here to the composition and changed it to wide angle. I don't know why I did that. I just wanted a very wide shot, hoping that that would help the, um, the prompt get us what we're looking for. So with this prompt here, I went ahead and just, you can go ahead and click refresh here. And I wanna show you what it looks like with a live a rendering of some new images. And okay, so these are all kind of, they're okay. This bottom one left, I don't know, I don't know what is going on there. <laughs> um, but if you see one that you like, what I like about Firefly, for example, say we really like this bottom right one, it's almost there, but there's a lot of artifacts we wanna get rid of. We can show similar results to this one. And that's why I like it, is that you find something you kind of like, and then have it generate similar results. It's not gonna be exact, but it puts you in a better situation than this one. So, oh, cool. Personally, I like this one. We're getting closer. It looks like they're holding a toothpick, which <laughs> ours is like three feet long. So I want that to go a lot longer. But what's great is we just need a source image here. Mm. And so what I'm gonna do is download it, or what you could do is download it. You will get hit with this transparency notification. Essentially, I'll show you what happens here is Adobe Firefly is putting a watermark in the bottom left-hand corner. A little trick you can do is head over into Photoshop, the beta version, and open this up here. And through Adobe's other tool, you can actually lasso or select that area, click generative fill. You don't put any input at all, and typically it's just gonna fill the area and remove the watermark. So you could get rid of that if you want, not saying you should, but you could. And that's what we did. Let's see what happens here. And so sweet. So we actually just got rid of the watermark by using the select tool and generative fill. So yeah, real quick on that note of commercial use, Adobe has said that Firefly is designed to generate images safe for commercial use. However, they also say here that during the beta phase of Firefly, the generated assets cannot be used for commercial purposes as we saw on Jake's image. So while it is in beta, if you wanna be 100% safe, then you can take the same steps to create a text to image generation using some different tools out there, such as Midjourney, which we'll dive into in a little bit. And those are able to be used commercially right now. But regardless of where you source your initial image, Jake, do you wanna go over what we did next? So this was the start of the image that we're now going to post to Amazon. So in Adobe Firefly, we got something just like this, but as you saw in Firefly, it's a lot smaller image than what we need to post on Amazon. So we made the canvas the appropriate size and we're now tasked with filling in the rest of the background. And just like we removed the watermark, we can use generative fill, selecting the entire layer or what I did actually was um, selected certain areas and just click generative fill. And what that did was after doing it twice on the top and then on the right hand, it filled it in really well. Like I'm very pleased with this. <laughs> now, 
what it did do is add a bunch of marshmallows and made it look like a, a wand. So my next prompt was to remove the marshmallows. I essentially just selected those marshmallows that I wanted removed, said remove marshmallows. That gave me this, again, Harry Potter wand. <laughs> so then my next prompt was I just, you know, hovered over or circled over the, the wand here and said wooden marshmallow skewer. And it turned into a wooden marshmallow skewer, except it had a really long marshmallow attached to it. So my next prompt was to just highlight this area. And then I just used generative fill. I didn't use any prompt. Click generative fill twice. And then it removed it, except it had another artifact over here. So I kept doing this. I kept trying to get rid of things by just like hovering over it and then generative fill, which I got rid of that. And I did it again and got rid of that. And so we're looking really good now. I just need to put a marshmallow at the top. And so my last prompt here was just roasted marshmallows. And it added roasted marshmallows. And to me, this looks really good. We're now showing a lot bigger picture of the stick, true to its size over bonfire. Now I'm kind of OCD and I really like this image that Jake generated, but <laughs> for some reason, I really wanted to see the tip of the, the skewer. So yeah. I just <laughs> grabbed the image from him and brought it into Photoshop and then just using the exact same thing again, I just kept selecting the edge here. And then after a number of generations, I think probably just putting in like wooden skewer or wouldn't no wooden skewer point tip. I tried all these uh, yeah. different variations and eventually I got this wooden skewer tip. And then you'll notice that this version is also square uh, because like our main image, wanted to make this one square. So that was actually pretty easy. Um, just like I showed you before, I selected this top part, which didn't exist, and then just did generative fill and it you know, expanded the fire here so that we had a square image. Now, we moved our final image here into Canva. Mm -hmm. Now we really just use Canva because it's very easy to add text and boxes. And it's also great for cavemen like Jake here. So brought the image in here and then we were really just modeling off of some of our original images that have this green box. And so we put keep a safe distance from the fire. As Jake mentioned earlier, we really wanted to point out the benefit of the extra strength because people don't really care that it's extra strong. They just really care that they keep their hands away from the fire and that the stick's gonna hold up their food. Yeah. So we're calling out the benefit here rather than the uh, feature. Now, a couple of notes here, just as I'm reflecting on the process, it's not like the absolute most perfect image. It kind of looks like we've got a, you know, gigantic bushfire here. Someone's but, making the most of a forest fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it's the fires are maybe a little bit extreme. And then also coming from kind of a photography uh, background, I don't feel like it's the greatest angle ever because our point here is that it, we wanna keep a safe distance from the fire. What would have been more ideal is if you imagine kind of a side angle shot where you can see the, the fire over here and you see the stick over here and you can actually uh, more visually see the distance from the fire. But the way that this angle is taken, the, the stick is kind of over the fire. So it doesn't, it doesn't accentuate the distance as much as we would like. So I actually went away and worked on an alternative image here, just like I described. So this time I used a different tool called Leonardo, which also does text to image generation, plus a bunch of other cool things. My first generation here was side angle of a campfire, but I didn't absolutely love it. So I adjusted the prompt to add during the day because it seemed a little bit dark, photorealistic, ultra realistic, photography and shallow depth of field. These are common prompts that you'll see a lot that generally help it look more real and the shallow depth of field will make the, the subject stand out from the background. Now, these generations looked a lot better. I quite liked the third one. So I opened up another tool in Leonardo called AI Canvas. It works just like generative fill where I input what I want and it'll expand the canvas around the image. And it did such a good job until this top right corner, which it's just struggled with for some reason. So I exported it as it is, and then I brought it into Photoshop. I adjusted the canvas so that it was square from the beginning, and then very quickly filled in the rest of the image using generative fill. This is where I then brought in a real photo that I'd taken on my iPhone in raw mode uh, of my hand holding a real jungle stick. My goal here was to either see if I could Photoshop this real stick onto an AI image, or use it as a reference to make sure that my AI image was, you know, accurate to the product. So 
opening up that image, first I cropped it in. Uh, I had a roll of tape on this image just to give it a little bit of a bend to make it seem real. Uh, I used the spot healing tool to quickly remove that. Then I used the AI remove background tool, which did a great job. Then I brought it over to my AI image. Now, it didn't look terrible, but it also didn't look great. Uh, I was a little bit too close to the, the green screen, and so you see bits of green around the edges of the stick. The lighting is also not quite the same as the background image. Um, however, with probably a little bit of adjusting, you probably could make it fit or blend in a little bit more, maybe darkening the, the image a little bit and playing with the exposure there. But at this point, I did want to see if I could generate a better stick using AI. So I began using generative fill again, hand-holding extra long wooden skewer. Number three was okay, but I generated again. This option was okay, but I wanted to generate a skewer that was longer. So I started again. I got another hand skewer combo that I did like, but now it was too thick. So I selected the stick here and asked for a thinner skewer. I finally extended the skewer. Then I realized that the hand, although I thought it looked good, it looked a bit too small. So I started generating large hand holding a wooden skewer and then finally got the hand that I liked. Then after that, I just generated marshmallows on the end and then brought this into Canva to add in the text and finalize the image. So I think this image ended up being a lot better than that first one that we originally made. And by comparing my real photo here next to the AI one, uh, I feel confident that it's close enough that we're not being misleading, which brings me to a good point. We wanted to challenge ourselves and see if we could create images with AI, but there's also the question of should you? If you are gonna try this, then do make sure that any images you use depict your product accurately. In this case, we were generating a stick, so that can generally look fairly accurate, but that might not be the case for your product depending on what it is. So don't ever risk your account by posting images that are wildly inaccurate. There's also the fact that if it looks too fake, it can also be off-putting to the viewer and actually work against you. So keep these things in mind as you go through this. And that's probably like a good point to, to sort of add here is that, you know, this isn't necessarily a replacement to oh, yeah. getting your own lifestyle photography done. In some cases it might be, you might be able to generate images that work really well. And you know, the big advantage of it is that lifestyle photography is really expensive or it can be. You know, we, we talked about doing a lifestyle shoot for our uh, jungle sticks. And we were like, okay, we need a whole bunch of people. Yep. We need someone to like host a, a party and have a grill and a fire. And you know, it would be quite a big effort to either organize it ourselves or it'd be very costly to pay someone to create this lifestyle shoot. Yep. So pretty much for free or very inexpensively from home, um, we were able to generate images like this that are pretty good. And so again, we're gonna test this image out you know, AI imagery like this is a really great tool in your tool belt. And so you could either use it as a final image or you yeah. could even use it to generate a, kind of like an idea mm. for the the images that you want and maybe like pass this on to a photographer or someone to show them what you're looking for. Or if you're just starting out, this could be a great way to just get some inexpensive lifestyle images to begin with um, until you can afford to do a full lifestyle shoot. So again, there's not a replacement for lifestyle photography, but it's a really great tool. Okay, so image number two done. Let's move on to image number three. Our current image calls out the eco-friendliness of our product. However, we noticed, especially looking at our competitors, that this was a little busy. We talk about it being eco-friendly and these three talking points, biodegradable, throw in the fire after use, and 100% bamboo, but durable, lightweight, and smooth surface is a whole other point that we're trying to make here. And so we wanted to hone in just on the eco-friendly component. Now we actually already had another image, this right image, in our storefront that we really liked because it is a lifestyle image, but we needed to adjust it a little bit more to really hone in on that eco-friendliness. So Lenny, what did we do with this image? Because I know we use a different tool this time. Yes, so that brings us to the next tool that we used, which is Canva, which we've already shown you, but this time around we were using the AI features. And specifically what we used is come in here, got the, the photo there, uh, and we just go to edit photo, and we're going to use the magic eraser. Mm -hmm. And essentially all you do is brush over any areas that you want to remove, and just like the name says, it's like magic and it will erase it. The reason we 
uh, using a tool like this is because we have this image, but we don't have the original image. So if we had like the, the Photoshop file or the design file, we could just, you know, get rid of the, the text and the line here, but we didn't have that. So we were just taking this flattened image and we wanted to remove some stuff. We wanted to get rid of durable, lightweight, smooth surface. So I'm just going to brush over this. It's pretty crude, my brushing skills, but <laughs> do that, just wait a few moments and boom, boom it's gone and it looks pretty good. It kept good. the person in the background too, which is really impressive. Yes, and this image does have the advantage that it is fairly dark, so it, you mm. could probably get away with it being a little bit imperfect, but it actually does like a pretty good job, even if it's like nice and bright and clear. So I'm gonna do it again. We did still want two rows of text, we were just wanting to remove one of them. So I'm gonna keep both of those uh, top two lines and I'm just gonna get rid of all the text and this bottom line here. It's amazing how well this does. It maintains everything in the background, it really adds to it. Yeah, definitely. And if you come in here, you can't really mm -hmm. tell, maybe the leg's a little bit funky, but no one is actually gonna be able to- it's so out of focus and dark. Yeah. So. Really, that's the main uh, the main thing that I did there. And then I'll show you the final result up here, which is just recreating these text boxes yeah. and dropping it in. And then we had our next image all done uh, using Canva, a tool that's obviously very you know user friendly and, and very popular. Um, so if you have Canva, you can utilize um, you know AI features like the like that remove one. Now, actually, while we're on the topic of Canva, it does have some other AI features. So let's just explore that really quick in oh, case yeah. you've got access to Canva, but maybe you don't have Photoshop. So if we click on this layer, we're gonna go over to edit image. They've also got another magic tool. Um, well, actually background remover, as the name suggests, um, removes the background. That is, uh, I believe, an AI tool as well. But let's go into Magic Edit, because what this one does, it's going to undo the previous stuff that I did. But this is very similar to Generative Fill, where you select an area and you tell it what you want to be there. So we'll just do a, uh, an example real quick. We didn't use this or need this, but just so that uh, you, know, you all get to see an example of it. So I've just brushed over that gonna go continue, describe what to generate. I'm gonna start out with just creating something that's not too dissimilar to, to what's already in the image here. I don't wanna uh, break it just yet. So we're just gonna go fire pit and hit generate. And so as you can see here, like Photoshop and like many of the AI image generation tools, it'll give you a number of options here. So let's see what it's gonna come up with. Oh wow, that's um, really, that's realistic. Yeah, that is looking pretty wow. good. This okay. actually looks... That looks like the exact main image a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> the, the good thing is it's like you're not expecting that to be AI, so you definitely get away yeah. with it. Now that um, is lower. <laughs> yeah, and so again, you can just generate new results. But yeah, th there's obviously lots of tools that get thrown out there like Midjourney, Dali, now Photoshop is um, being talked about a lot, but you know, Canva has this functionality as well. Um, and just in case you didn't know it, you can do things like this. And yeah, that actually looks bad. really, really good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just want to see what else I could yeah, do to- Put it to the test here. Yeah. <laughs> unicorn, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to see what happens if I put a unicorn in the, the, in the fire, just to try and break it here a little bit. I'm not expecting it to be perfect, but I'm just actually curious what it's going to come up with. <laughs> All right, that's a funky looking unicorn there. Um, I did actually do this before. Uh, that one looks it's not bad. pretty good. I actually did, did try this before and got a fairly good result. Um, I don't know why you would want a unicorn in the fire, but just to kind of show you, you know, how far you can push these tools. Um, that's looking The only thing better. it doesn't do well with is text and, and then like faces and hands and stuff. I think yeah. Canva's still very far behind that, but like you said, you can remove the text, but adding text is not nothing you can do yet with this tool. Yeah, definitely. So while, you know, this is obviously ridiculous, it really, that's my fault for putting a unicorn in the fire, but it, it actually does like such a good job of blending it the does. images, like the lighting, uh, the shadows and everything. It's, you know, it matches the rocks here so that it, uh, or dirt and so forth. So despite me throwing a, throwing a curveball here, it, it does like a pretty good job. So Canva is another great tool to, to utilize. 
Okay, so image number three done. Now on to image number four. So currently we're calling out the semi-pointed marshmallow component here. But really, again, the reason why this is important is because it's kid, it's kid safe. So there's other marshmallow or bamboo alternatives out there that are really pointy edges. And parents don't like that buy that for their kid. They don't want them to poke someone's eye out with it. Um, but we wanted to just be more direct with this. So this is a, again, another feature oriented uh, image here. Just like our competitor, but we really like their their idea of this, a lifestyle image. And at the top left, they're using accident proof design. It's a little bit closer to what we want to get, but we now actually want to directly call out that this is kid safe. And right now, our image is mostly text. And that little lifestyle image we have here of the girl is like 25% of the image. So we wanted yeah. to expand that and make that the focal point. So we just wanted a lifestyle image of this. Yeah, and one other little tip to, to point out here, we were trying to figure out what do we what do we call this benefit? Mm -hmm. And so one little thing that we did, we just typed in our keyword here, bamboo marshmallow roasting sticks, and just found one of the top listings here. This one has almost 1,400 reviews. That's the, the biggest one here. So just went down to the rating. So if we click on that one, this section at the top shows frequently used phrases. Mm -hmm. And so when we look here, we see safe distance. So we clicked on this one and then we just read through a few reviews. So safe distance for our kids, uh, my children in a safe distance, my children at a safe yeah. distance, keep safe distance from the fire and kid friendly, um, safe distance from the fire and kids. And we're just seeing this over and over and over. So that helped validate that the, you know, the real benefit here is that it's kid safe or kid friendly. Yes. So we knew that we, we wanted to take that language and put it onto our image. So initially we did actually try to use AI to generate a similar lifestyle image to the inspiration one that we really liked. Mm -hmm. But then when we looked on our uh, storefront, we actually found that we already had a really great lifestyle image that you see right here. And we're like, oh, why don't we use this? For some reason we had this on our storefront, but not on our listing. Now the only trouble was we couldn't again find the original photo file. So I was able to save it from our storefront, but as you can probably tell here, it's pretty pixelated and grainy. We, yeah. we only had a low res version, but this is where another AI tool comes into play and I actually used AI to upscale and improve the quality of this image. So it, this was just a completely free tool. All I did was just type in AI image upscaler and then I choose this one here. And essentially all you do is just drag and drop your image onto here, hit start, and it spits back a upscaled version. You can do 200% or 400%. You can see that there's like a number of these different tools. Mm. They, you know, they're typically free. They might only give you like five or six uses or something like that, but it was perfect for what we were after. And I was really impressed with the result. So I've got the sort of before and after. This is the original low res version. And then this was the upscaled version. And you can just see such a big difference in this original version. You can see uh, like all these artifacts and horrible compression uh, around the text here. You can see that around the, the boy's face. But now if we swap to the enhanced version, it's cleaned it up so well, but it's, it's maintained the details of the image, but it's just made it sort of sharper, improved the clarity. Um, so it now made this image uh, a lot more usable and it now matches the resolution of our other images. So you definitely wanna make your images at least 1500 pixels so that it's zoomable and even Amazon recommends that you do so. So here's the final image that we came up with. We didn't change too much. We just recreated the text here. And like we mentioned, we really wanted to call out the kid-friendly design. We still added in the fact that it was semi-pointed, but the main point we wanted to make was that it was safe for your kids. Okay, so image number four done. Let's now move on to image number five. Currently, we're calling out that these sticks could be used in a multi-purpose format, whether it's shish kebabs, marshmallows, sausages, any type of occasion. However, again, just like the last image, we're mostly calling out text here. We have these little lifestyle images, but like our competitors, why don't we just show that rather than telling that? And so that was the inspiration for this image. Let's show the lifestyle component here. Let's show the multi-purpose component and just be a little bit more direct. And what we did again, we used Adobe Firefly here. The prompt I used this time was grilling shrimp with wooden skewers. So I just picked out a, a one food type. We originally actually said that maybe we want to 
like this image show they have corn in there, they have a, a bunch of different foods. Maybe we were just gonna do a bunch of squares, like four different squares and mm -hmm. show different foods. Or what we came up with was, let's just show shrimp. We haven't shown it before in our listing. And I use this prompt again with the exact same setup, selecting photo, wide angle, and it looks a lot different than this. What we actually found was this one here. So we found this image that we really liked, except the only problem was, as you can see here, they look like toothpicks and ours are three feet long. So we needed to extend this. And all I really did was use the lasso tool, go like this, and then just say, I think I said extend wooden skewers. And I even spelled it wrong. So let's see if that comes up exactly <laughs> like it did for us in our final image, which we'll see here in a second. Okay, great. So it actually did it even though I spelled it wrong. And this is variation one, two, oh, nice. and three. So they look oh, pretty good. really good. It was that easy, to be honest with you. I mean, we found an inspiration image from Adobe Firefly, brought it in here, and just fixed it a little bit. And so what that looks like over in Canva is we added it here and then just made the text again more direct for what we're trying to call out. So rather than just saying multi-purpose, we're gonna say that it's perfect for any occasion, whether it's a Christmas party, a holiday party, birthday party, and that was our main call out here. Now, as we were generating all of these images, we were both playing around in different tools, trying to generate really all of them. And so that brings us to the next tool, which was one that I was using for this particular photo, which is Mid Journey. Once you sign up for an account, you do need to operate it inside of Discord. The very simple way to approach it is you just need to type in uh, backslash imagine, and then you type in your prompt. So for example, it would be a uh, wooden skewer with a single marshmallow over a campfire. And that's kind of like the basis for a prompt. And then you wait a few moments for it to generate. All right, so let's take a look at our result here. This wasn't the greatest prompt in the world. I mean, I guess it did give me a wooden skewer and a yeah. marshmallow over a campfire. Anyhow, so the angle that I was approaching this image was to come up with different scenarios or occasions where you might be roasting something with the stick. So this first prompt here is wide shot of a happy family sitting around a backyard grill during the day, ultra realistic, bright, vibrant, warm, happy colors, photography using a 50 mil prime lens with a shallow depth of field. You know, generally you that's the typical kind of prompt that you would see in mid journey. You use like a lot of extra sort of tags that help define what the image is. And so this is what it came up with, which mostly some of these don't look too bad. I, no. I don't mind this yeah. bottom right one. Um, I thought that was pretty good. Now your options within Mid Journey, you've got the option to upscale any of these four images that you like, meaning it becomes a bigger resolution, or you can create variations of them if they if you you know want to see something fairly similar. Mm. Or the other option is to kind of like re-roll and regenerate the images. So I believe that's what I ended up doing a number of times. So I regenerated it and then this was the next generation that I got. That looks nice. And yeah, there's some not so bad family photos These here. These would work really well just as like um, your A plus content images too, or in your, in your storefront. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so let's see what I did differently here. Actually, I think that one was just another regeneration. And then I went in a different direction with this next one. Mm. So these images, they do look pretty good, but with a lot of these image generation tools, they look good from afar, but when oh, you yeah. zoom in, the faces are ten, you know, faces, often hands, tend to look a little bit funky. Uh, word of warning, anytime that you try to generate a, a happy family, <laughs> they gen they, it often looks terrifying. So I wanted to go with a different direction. So I tried something different here where I went ultra wide shot of a backyard grill with a bowl of wooden skewers was beside it during the day, a family relaxing in the distance. So now I wanted to put them in the background where yeah. you maybe couldn't see the deformities or anything like that. Ultra realistic cinematic photography uh, using a prime lens with a shallow depth of field. And now this is what I got. So now nice. I was kind of going off in a, a different direction here where I had the grill in the foreground and the f you could still see the family, but they were less visible or more out of focus. Oh, yeah. But essentially I continued this process, so regenerating again and got some new options here. Sometimes you're kind of getting options you like, so like getting closer, sometimes you're getting further away. I think it was pretty soon at this point that I changed up my prompt 
prompt again. And I think I just mostly added marshmallows into the prompt. So a bowl of wooden skewers, marshmallows. I didn't write that very well, but I wanted to see what would happen. And so what happened was I got a whole fire pit here full of, of marshmallows, um, <laughs> which is kind of an interesting, interesting maybe as artwork, but not quite what I was after. I reran that one a few more times here. That's the great thing. You can just really quickly hit regenerate and it'll just keep generating new options for you. And at the same time, you can also put in new prompts. So while I was trying to regenerate and get the backyard grill and family photo working, I also was trying out a different use case, which was a children's party. So you'll see I've got this big long prompt here, a vibrant and energetic kids outdoor party in a sprawling park filled with laughter and joy. And you can see the, the entire prompt here. It was a little bit, oh, nice. a little bit over the top. It is a pretty fun looking kids party. I never got any kids parties like this when, <laughs> when I grew up, but this wasn't quite right. Um, so we'll keep going down. And then I tried a, a different prompt here and I actually created these using chat GPT. That's, oh, that's why cool. they're so long and different. And that's another cool way that you can utilize all of these awesome. AI tools together. Um, you can use a tool like chat GPT to, you know, tell it like, this is roughly what I want. Like give me a prompt for mid journey um, using the example of like a kid's outdoor party. And so that's how I came up with um, some of these really crazy long prompts. and. I was just throwing them into mid journey to kind of see what results I could get. So I just kept regenerating and then this one was getting a little bit closer. I, I was quite liking these images, although they're a little bit muted. I would have loved a, a little bit more vibrancy, but I was getting pretty close. Again, at the same time, I kept regenerating and tweaking my prompts for the family and, and backyard grill. And it did bring me to this generation here and I actually liked most of these. My favorites were this image two and image four. So I ended up uh, upscaling image two, but I also created variations of two and four. And so if we scroll down, we'll see what those look like. So. Here was the variations. It's very similar, but it was just tweaked ever so slightly here. And then here's the other one that also had variations. And so I really quite liked some of these images here, mm. but we ultimately ended up going with the, you know, the, the shrimp on the Barbie for the perfect for any occasion. However, when we went down to the next image on our list, we realized that the family photo would actually be perfect. So yeah. this last image here, we wanted to just call out that this was a 110 pack. You get lots and lots of uh, roasting sticks. It's great for families. Um, so you, because you've got so many of them and we ended up using one of these images. I think we upscaled, I think it was this image number two here. I upscaled it in mid journey and then imported it here into Canva where we just kind of added in that same text we didn't do anything too crazy with this one and we got our final image here so those are the final images that we came up with and that we're going to upload and test out on amazon now by no means are they perfect um we just wanted to challenge ourselves to see can we create images utilizing AI image generation. And honestly, we're still learning a lot of these tools and experimenting with them. We generated these in a pretty short amount of time. And you know, we could definitely keep working on these and keep trying different methods and trying to improve. We can also experiment with some of our other products. So for example, we've got this image here of our washable pee pads. This is actually an image that I actually just took on my iPhone and I put it in raw mode so that the quality was a little bit better. We're in here in, in Photoshop and um, there's actually another really great AI tool which is remove background. So mm. if I click on that one, oh, wow. it just does such an amazing job so of that. So quick too, that, that was in real time. If that's sped up by the way. Yeah, it's not sped up or anything. That just removed, it just knew what the background was. I actually found that like adding a dog, which is what I'm going to try to do here. I found it to be way easier than the uh, roasting sticks. Mm. That That's like one other good note to make here yeah. is that, you know, the, the number of generations or the, the complexity of the images is going to vary depending on what type of product you're making. I've definitely found that working with the dog mats and just putting a dog on them <laughs> is a lot easier, at least in my experience, than the, the wooden skewers, because I remember like playing around with so many different prompts. Like, is it wooden skewer? Is it just skewer? Is it a roasting stick? Is it a kebab? And like these all had slightly different 
results and we had to yeah. kind of like play around with the prompts a lot but i personally found this to be a lot easier so if we just do an example here generate i'm gonna go fluffy brown golden doodle because i have one of those and i love him dearly so i'm just gonna say like lying on a mat i probably don't even need to say that part mm. but we'll just hit generate and all right so what have we got here is number one number two number number, number three's three not is bad. okay i have seen better results before so i'm gonna regenerate again and we'll see what it comes up with this is so far so much better than a lot of our competitors who are clearly just dragging a dog on the image like you can see how it's sort of it being compressed into the mat a little bit. They're doing a good job shadowing. Yes. So even though the, the face is all that one's a That's little so bit funky. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, to your point, Jake, what is working really well about this is it's like the lighting and the shadows, it, it blends into the original image pretty well. It has replaced parts of our mat, like the design here, but you could actually sort of mask those out. Right. We'll show on screen some of the other generations <laughs> I've had in the past have actually had better results than this. Now, in this video, we've featured Photoshop and the generative fill option uh, a number of times, but there are other tools out there that do very similar things. So for example, Leonardo.ai is another great tool that I've used a whole bunch and currently you can use it for free and you get 150 credits per day which gives you a whole bunch of, of different uses. You can use their, uh, I think it's called a canvas expansion tool where just like this you import an image and then you can select parts of that image and generate something on there. If you're familiar with Dali, that's from OpenAI, who uh, owns ChatGPT. That tool also allows you to expand the canvas as well and just type in with prompts what you want to see. So there's so many exciting options out there. So what's next for us is we're going to upload these images to Amazon and specifically track two metrics. The first metric is our click-through rate on the main image, seeing if we're actually getting more people to click over than our last image, the non-AI generated one. And then secondly, our conversion rate. We're gonna see just by changing all of our other images, does our conversion rate change? Um, I'm hoping it does. If not, then we'll go back to the drawing board and do more iterations. Um, but stay tuned because we will release another video or a few videos showing you that click-through rate and conversion rate differences. So make sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow us on LinkedIn and all of our social media. Now, if you wanna continue learning about AI, we have an awesome video that shows you 15 insanely helpful ways that you can use ChatGPT right now to scale your Amazon business. So make sure to watch that video and thank you so much for watching this one. We'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, uh, we are back here live to answer your questions. So if you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll be here for the next little bit to answer as many as we can. Yeah, and we got a lot of good ones to start. So we'll start with the ones that we saw earlier. Um, but like Lenny said, feel free to add in your questions as we're getting through these questions so far. So um, right. Lenny, the first question, because I, I know we featured it heavily, is how to enroll in Photoshop beta program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you will get access to the uh, Photoshop beta as long as you have an active subs subscription to Photoshop or Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, you essentially, uh, generative fill specifically is only available in beta, like I mentioned in the video. In order to access that, you just go into uh, Adobe Creative. Actually, I can probably share my screen here. Mm -hmm. um, let me bring it up. Where is that? In one, one. Um, oh no, it's actually freezing on me. Screen share. One point I wanted to bring up too is um, you had the Creative Cloud already and I signed up for Adobe account like right away and got it. So um, if you don't have it already, it's super quick to sign up for an Adobe account and then get access to the beta, just like I did. Yeah, I can't bring it up right now, but essentially you just have like your Adobe desktop manager. There's like a little section that just says beta apps and you can download the beta version of any app. So you can just download that one for Photoshop and then you'll get access to generative fill. Mm -hmm. And then at some point in the future, that'll move out of beta and that'll just go into the standard version. So essentially the answer is just to have a subscription to Photoshop or to Adobe Creative Cloud. Perfect. All right, sticking on the topic of Photoshop, with Adobe's guidelines for using this AI technology, it states it cannot be used for commercial use like we saw earlier in this video. So how do you get around that? Yeah, good question. Um, like like I pointed out in the, the video, uh, when it comes to like Firefly, um, 
Adobe says that it, it is going to be designed for commercial use. They're training it for that. It's just currently, whilst it's in beta, that it's not. I was trying to get some more information around like what are they class as commercial use, whether they're talking about using the image as it is and then like selling that as digital art or, or something else, or whether it's if you're just using it as, um, you know, let's say you're using it uh, in an, an image ad or something like that. I think that might be okay from my understanding. But mm -hmm. there's probably like a couple of things. Either I would say just keep playing around with Firefly and um, wait until that comes out of beta before specifically using it for commercial use. And like some of the suggestions we made, you can use it as references and so forth. I mean, there's so many uh, great tools like we showed you, Midjourney, Dali, Leonardo, um, mm -hmm. even Canva, uh, that you can use that. So um, yeah, I think you've got plenty of, of options there. Yeah. And that actually segues great into this next question of what other AI tools could we use if we don't use Photoshop? Yeah, I think we covered a lot of the, the main ones. Of course, like Midjourney, a lot of people know about that one. Uh, Leonardo is one that I've been using a lot and I really, really like that one. There's so much customization you can do with your images and they continue to roll out new features. It also, you know, you can get started with it for free and you get 150 credits per day, mm -hmm. which um, it, it depends uh, depends on your settings as to how many you know tokens or credits you use up. But you know that's a good daily balance. You can easily get whatever. Um, I guess anywhere from probably like 10 to 50 images, depending on how many credits you use. So that's a great free option that produces really great results. You can use it commercially. Uh, you can also use, if you subscribe to, to Midjourney, like I'm subscribed to Midjourney on the lowest plan, it's just $10 per month. And you can use those images commercially and that produces really, really great results. The latest uh, version five model of Midjourney is really amazing. Very, very photo realistic. They've fixed up the, the problems or a lot of the problems with like hands and things that mm. um, a lot of these AI image generators have, have struggled with. So yeah, yeah. Leonardo, uh, Midjourney, Dali uh, is from OpenAI. I haven't played with that one as much. Yeah. Um, when I did use it in the past, I didn't like it as much as Midjourney or Leonardo, but um, it could be worth playing around with. When I did use it, I was able to use it for free with like a few credits. I don't know if that's still the case. Um, but as we showed, there's also some sort of AI tools within Canva as well. They've got their, as we showed, their magic, well, there's not a magic erase, magic replace or whatever it was yeah. called, where you know you can just select something and tell it to generate. Um, I haven't actually tried to see whether it will generate something from scratch or whether it only works on an existing image, but... I think you can. I think you can start a canvas and then generate it from scratch. It might not be the best design, but you definitely can start from scratch on Canva. Yeah, on that note, I so far from what I've seen, um, mostly in Photoshop, you I don't think you get as good of a result when you start from scratch. So yeah. we were showing a lot of examples of like taking an existing image in Photoshop and then using generative fill to build on that. Right. And it does a really great job of understanding what the image is and it goes like, okay, this is a, a photo and so it gives you photo realistic uh, generations. Right. Um, I've also like tried it out with like inserting like an illustration or a cartoon type design and using the generative fill matches that. Whereas when I've just had like a blank canvas and I've just done uh, generative fill from scratch, it does come up with something, uh, but it, you know, I guess it doesn't know, you know, whether it's meant to be photorealistic or not. And that the the results I've gotten aren't that great. I, I much prefer to start with uh, an existing image. Yeah. Yeah. This brings up a good question from Charles. He asked, uh, Charles asked three questions, all pretty similar, and I think it can be summed up in this one question here. Would you say that there's a specific tool that does a better job in creating marketing materials? Midjourney seems to create mostly uh, like fantasy, weird visuals, where Leonardo claims its focus is gaming. And so another question here, Lenny, just to loop it in is like, um, specifically for our industry and e-commerce, is there a tool out there that is better than the rest that you'd recommend, for, specifically for Amazon sellers? You know, honestly, I don't think so. This technology is literally changing every week. 
uh, on a daily basis where each of these tools are like highly competitive with each other. Yeah. You know, next week, I'm sure there's gonna be new tools. Well, actually there are new AI tools every single day, but the next big one might come out next week. Um, and so I, I don't, like you can use all of these tools. So for example, um, Mid Journey is great at creating so many different things. I've been playing around with like creating uh, like logo designs and things, which is more, you know, obviously of like a marketing branding type thing. Um, so I've been creating or playing around with creating logos and with creating like background banners and things. So it, it is a lot broader than just creating, you know, fantasy artwork and, and so forth, which is like what you see a lot and what it does really well. Um, but it, it is pretty diverse. Mm. Um, yeah, as an sort of all rounder, yeah. I'd say maybe like photo, Photoshop Firefly combo is, yeah. is, is pretty strong at doing, uh, I, I mean, I say that just because Adobe is, you know, very much connected to creators, professionals, um, you know, in the business marketing advertising yeah. realm. So it would make sense that their offerings are very much tailored to that sort of market. But I wouldn't yeah. say they're much better than all of them. Honestly, the stance that I really have right now with uh, AI image generation and just all of AI tools right now is I'm trying to test out as many of them as possible. And I'm not, I'm not necessarily married to any one of them, but just mm -hmm. experimenting with them all. Uh, Cause we're you know, very much in the early stages of this uh, technology, really transforming all of our industries. And you know, I think it's here to stay. And so I think it's really wise for all of us to get really familiar with all of um, these different types of technologies, whether it's like oh, yeah. ChatGPT or Google's Bard, and I'm sure like maybe like Apple and other people are gonna come up with their own large language models, try out all the image generation tools. Um, mm. Yeah, so I, I guess I struggle to like pick one. The, the great part about Photoshop, in my opinion, is you can use it for more than just um, generative fill, which is what we did in this video, yeah. mostly. It's Photoshop. It's, if you go to, to get your professional images done, whoever's doing those is going to use Photoshop probably to edit. And that's great because there are some tools that do one thing well, like the generative fill. And that's like their main thing they do, whereas Photoshop does generative fill, but it's also Photoshop. Mm. So in terms of like investment, if you were invest in one tool, just for me, um, I would choose Photoshop for that re that reason. Yeah, it does that's more than just the, a good point. Yeah, yeah, you can do some great generations in a lot of these other tools, but then ultimately, if you're gonna out, uh, like edit it, add text, yeah. uh, etc., you're gonna take it into Photoshop or maybe Canva, but like Photoshop's a little more built out and so forth. So that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. one um, feature of AI that I haven't got to play with yet because it is a paid feature on a lot of these tools is creating a model for your product. And I want to bring this up because there's a question here about this. The question is, if you don't have, say, a generic product like our uh, these skewers, which is super generic, it's just a wooden skewer, um, but have a, a watch um, in a special design, for example, maybe it's like a watch, um, is there a way to let AI implement that into the rendering? So that we got lucky. We're using this on a very generic product. Um, however, if your product is more you know, special, it's got different designs, maybe it's unique, you might not be able to get away with a lot of things that we did in this video. You can certainly do backgrounds, you can certainly mm. do um, seasonal things or generative fill. Maybe um, you wanna do something to your model, maybe not the product itself, to the environment. There's so many ways you can use AI on special products, especially design products, um, rather than just like coming up with the design through um, AI. But I wanted to like bring up the model um, technology that, again, I haven't got to play with yet, but I think it's awesome. And once it gets to a level of just being implemented in Adobe, Adobe's working on this. It's one of their upcoming tools that they have if you log into like their beta website. Um, essentially, like you just, let's say you're selling this watch, you can scan it, you can take photos of it, and then it will learn what this item is, and you can tell it to put it on someone's wrist or put it in some environment. So there are tools out there that do that now. I don't have experience with them, mm. um, but once maybe I do, or once they, you know, become better and easier to use. I think that's the future of training models, essentially, and then using AI to put it wherever you want it to. Yeah, I can uh, I can show a quick example oh, cool. here. I, I don't I don't know how deep to get into this because it this is probably like more advanced um, once you're sort of familiar with these AI tools. But uh, so here's Leonardo, for example, and 
within Leonardo, what I like is you've got lots of different models that you can use. So we'll just go to select custom model and cool. you can go into the platform models and you can read descriptions about each one, each one, like some are better at photorealism, some are better at artwork, um, and you've got all of these different ones here. But as you come down here, you'll see some ones that are very specific. This one is a model for battle axes or chest armor and character portraits and uh, yeah. spirit creatures, cute animal characters. So these are very specific models that have been trained with a lot of images of that specific um, you know, type of object or, or character. And within Leonardo, you can actually do that yourself and that you come over to training and data sets. So mm. this is where you can create your own data set. So you go create new data set and we might uh, do, you know, let's say just roasting sticks as an example and create a data set. And essentially what you do here, you upload, I think it's about, they recommend 15 to 20 images, but you upload a whole bunch of images for the for your product and then the AI is gonna go away and create a model based off of the data that you've mm. given it. So you're, you're telling it what this product or the, you know what this object is and then you know um, you can choose your own model rather than these ones like your own model that's been trained for a specific product and so I think that could be something to test out as an Amazon seller in the example of a watch yeah. or um, I don't know any other products uh, you could potentially be trying to train these models to learn and understand what your um, yeah. what your item is. But that's something you could play around with right now and then be able to use AI to hopefully generate something that um, essentially generate a product, like your product. I think that's the future. Like That is awesome. Once people master this, I think it's game over. Everyone's going to be using AI if it's that easy or when it becomes this easy to use in a model like, in, like how you said. There's another example. Actually, I'm going to come back here. Um, yeah, because yeah, I, I geek out on this stuff. So. <laughs> There's another thing, so uh, you saw the example, I, I showed this in the, the, the video there about generating the campfire here. This is just your standard image, uh, text to image generation, mm -hmm. but you've got a whole bunch of settings down here and one of them is uh, called image to image. So I uploaded this image of our jungle sticks here and, oh wait, you go, yeah, image to, to image. Ah, oh yeah, image to image is the one that I was, um, actually using. And what that means is when you type in a prompt, it uses the likeness of that image of yours. Um, probably a better example is if you put a picture of a person posing in a certain way, then when you run a, a generation up here of like create a superhero or whatever, it's going to adopt to the same pose. Um, and just to show you an example here that I was trying to mess around with, you can kind of see uh, jungle sticks here. I used that image and then I was trying to put a campfire behind it. Actually, yeah, you can see my prompts here, wooden kebabs with a campfire in the distance. Um, <laughs> I was hoping to kind of get a, a campfire generated behind the image. I thought that would be really cool if I could get the sticks in the foreground and then just generated the background, but I guess that's not quite how it works. So you can kind of see <laughs> how it sort of uh, merged that into, it took the shape of the, the jungle sticks and whatever I said as the prompt, it sort of put that into the, the jungle sticks, which was kind of <laughs> cool. So this isn't really the greatest example of using this, um, but that's... It's, it's on the right track. It's on the right track, yeah. And then there's also control net, which I haven't, um, which is, I think, essentially the same thing. You use control net along with image to image. And control net, um, that is essentially the same thing. It's like you're controlling the the parameters of the image generation and making sure that it uh, is very similar to the the image and what you're inputting. Um, so, yeah, I'm still playing around to find really practical uses for your yeah. Amazon products. Um, and when I do, we'll definitely share. But I think yeah, these technologies are. Uh, coming a long way. Yeah, and then just before we get to this next question, I do think there's so many other use cases outside of generating your actual product. Like we mentioned in this video, the background, you can change the model. Um, one just way to visualize this is maybe you have a model that's showing a watch 
um, come Christmas time, you can use Dinner to Fill in Photoshop to put a Christmas hat on them or something similar. Maybe it's like a, a, yeah. a Father's Day shirt or something. Um, something just to change the model or the background. It doesn't always have to be the product. So I know we showed how to use AI for our product, um, but you can think way bigger than that and become more creative. So I think that's a great segue to this question, which I love. The question is, can we use these AI generated photos on sponsored ads? I, um, with with the exception of Adobe, which I'm a yeah. little bit shaky on, then yes. Um, like the other tools that I mentioned, or well, specifically like Leonardo and Midjourney, you can definitely use them commercially. So yeah, there's no problem using them on ads. Yeah, yeah. And, and that I think is a great way to use AI because it's so expensive to get these lifestyle images done professionally. And if you're going mm. to pay that money, it makes sense to do your main images or maybe a storefront and A plus content images. The ads are awesome. So yeah, you're talking about sponsored brand and sponsored display campaigns. Creating custom images for that, you can continuously test with AI and your product doesn't need to be in the photo. That's the crazy thing is you can use a lifestyle image. Um, I believe one of the photos that we showed today, our last image, didn't actually have our product in it. It was a lifestyle of like our target audience. Mm. And you can use that as the visual to attract people into your, um, to click your ad because otherwise it's usually just like your logo or your products. But when you use a custom image, Amazon has some stat to explain that your click-through rate significantly increases, um, and then therefore hopefully sales would as well. So AI for sponsored brand and sponsored display campaigns I think is a great idea generating lifestyle images. Um, so great use case that you can use that for. Yeah, and obviously the name of the game with advertising is is testing. So yeah. it's, it's a very inexpensive, quick way that you can create a bunch of mm. different lifestyle images or, and test them against the ones that you already use. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Let's bring it back now to my level, um, which is Canva. Um, so the question here, Lenny, is can Canva do all of this? I know we showed a few tools, but what's your stance on using Canva? Um, I, I mean, I've really, <laughs> I was like a, I was a snob and didn't want to use Canva for a really long time because I'm like, that's for, that's for beginners. I, you know, I've, I've always used Photoshop, but once I started using Canva, I got addicted just because it's so quick and easy to throw together designs. I love the sort of community aspect of like, you've got all these templates and things and you just yeah. search for like YouTube thumbnail or yeah. like banner um, flyer and it's got a design and you just plug and play your images. It makes it really easy. In terms of AI, um, I don't think it's as sophisticated as these other tools. However, you know, we did show you some really great use cases. I love the, um, some of the features that I, I really love here. I'll just share my screen again. Because I got Canva up here, um, so yeah, the the main ones I I'm pro I might be missing some, but like you go edit photo, and these are the a the main AI tools that I'm aware of. Removing the background, I use that so much. That is really awesome. Then uh, Magic Eraser, that's mm. the 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 one where you can you know change the image. So essentially generative fill. Um, I don't know. I'm kind like, of put like a bear or something yeah like... I, that's what i was thinking i was thinking a bear <laughs> i was like what would be what would be here we gotta like wait a second it might be pretty small oh, oh did you erase oh, it oh sorry you eraser it. whoops yeah. my bad i meant magic to edit. use magic edit yeah nice um yeah i don't know whether it's it needs to be out of focus i guess yeah uh, maybe so let's I'll... see if it's smart enough to realize that's what's going on right now in the photo yeah bear in the i mean i probably just need to put bear in there but i'll mm -hmm. we'll see what happens and while this is uh, generating uh, canva's great for packaging and labels and all that so as we mentioned with photoshop you can use canva for so many reasons um and it's a great investment in my opinion using the pro plan okay so <laughs> just the head of it yeah no that's not that's not great so um canva can give you good results but it's it's i guess strike rate isn't as good as the the other tools um canva is really uh yeah bear in the what woods you could do out of focus I, i'm probably like this probably isn't the greatest um the the greatest example if i put something in the foreground mm. in next to the campfire here it would do a pretty good job i think and then really, I mean, this is good for infographics too. Like we're trying to do a lifestyle image in a tool like Canva. Okay, oh gosh. okay we'll, um, we'll leave that one. Let's just try one more real quick. So I'm gonna try... I say we upload it. Yeah. 
like if I just say continue and I just put a plate, I'm just gonna keep it pretty simple. I think it'll do a good job of adding a plate here. You know what? How about, you know, we're at 38 likes right now. If we get up to 50, we'll post it. Yeah, <laughs> no. We'll, we'll go straight to, straight to Amazon. <laughs> it's gonna see, yeah, so like that's photorealistic. That, nice. I wouldn't question that if I saw this as an image. That one I would be, because the physics don't make sense. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's an example of good Canva and bad Canva. Um, yeah, I guess it's like, I, I, I like Canva for magic arrays. Um, yeah. So I like it for quickly editing photos. You can drop a photo in there and like, you could paint out like in the background of our shot, you could paint out that little, yeah. like there's like a light thing up there and you could paint, you can paint little imperfections out of photos. So um, I really love that. And you can use this magic edit tool, a little bit hit or miss. So I, it wouldn't be my primary image generation tool, but I would pretty much always have Canva because it's a great all rounder for everything else, just designing assets really quickly. Especially like infographics, something that you don't need a real lifestyle image for. I think that's what a lot of people use Canva for, specifically on Amazon, is just doing little call outs um, with text. Yeah, definitely. Um, great, awesome. Well, here's a question. Um, so can you change the color of a product with AI? Specifically with AI, because I know you can do it outside of AI, but like with AI, have you done that? Just changed I haven't done that specifically, but it would be more or less the same thing. You're using any of these tools that have that sort of generative fill feature, and you would just select the, the section that you want to change, and in your prompt, you would just say red, wooden skewer or yeah. something. And, and hopefully it keeps it. That's probably the challenge, is trying to get it to maintain what it's doing, but then change just the color. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's as, um, as, adva as advanced as to like only change the color. Right, um, which is something Photoshop would do by just masking it. Yeah, th this is where like using things like control net might help mm. where you can, um, yeah, control what you're changing and so forth a little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah I, I don't think it's as simple as just like toggle between the different colors. I think you can do it, but it might take a little bit of prompting work. And there might be some specific tools that do that. I'm sure if you look that up, it might be very hard to find that, but I'm sure there's our tools out there that just change the color of something. Um, so I will look for that if that's like your main use case. Yeah. Maybe for like variations. Cool. Um, just wanted to address this question. I saw it a few times. Um, Elizabeth is asking, will this available or video be available for replay? Uh, so we can go step by step. Yes, this video will be available after this live ends. And then if you want to interact and ask any questions, make sure to leave those questions in the comment section, not in the chat, because the chat disappears. But after we end the stream, um, once you answer all your questions, then yeah, this video you can find right on our channel. Yeah, and also when you uh, when you do go through and watch this video, um, let us know if you want us to make any other content. Yeah. So this one was uh, challenging to put together because you know um, uh, even just like the one example that I showed in Leonardo, it, it took me, I don't know, I think it was like 30 minutes or so, but the example was highly sped up and showed you my journey of prompting in about 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, let us know if you would like a more slowed down step-by-step -step tutorial, because um, we can create that. This one was a little more high level, more so just trying to talk high level about the prompts and the approach. Mm. But if you want something a little slower and more detailed, let us know. Or if you just, if you like the pace then, then, and want something different, then let us know that too. Cool. Cool. Now this is a similar question to the last one. It's about text. So what kind of AI tools can we use to add stylized captions over photos based on text we need. Is it, do you have any luck with getting AI specifically to generate text? Um, I know I've had some issues with that, um, sort of funky. Yeah, generally AI doesn't do a great job of generating text. If you're just yeah. trying to generate text, I wouldn't be, I would just use <laughs> the old school text box tools, like I would just take it into Photoshop and Canva. You don't really need yeah. AI to generate text. But um, one, one cool use case in Adobe Firefly is text mm, effects. Right. Um, and this one's really cool. So I'm gonna enter the text I wanna say, Jungle Scout, and then I'm gonna say the Amazon, I don't know, like Jungle Vines or something. 
um, and we'll just see what it comes up with. This is really cool because it, it takes the text that you create and then it applies your, um, you know, your prompt to it. So yeah, Jungle Vines wasn't very, um, wasn't very creative, but That's now I've cool. got some, some options here. This is a really fun tool that only Firefly has. Um, so I, I really like this one. This is the main AI text recommendation that I would have. And then of course, what is really cool about Firefly is that it gives you all of these options on the side. So I can just like play around with my font and mm. colors and you can kind of like play around to your heart's content here. But this is the one text tool that I'd recommend. Otherwise, if you're just applying text on top of an image, take it into Canva, take it into Photoshop yeah. and you're gonna have um, way more options and control over what you're creating. Yeah, this is really cool. I, my answer is gonna use, be Canva, but this specifically using AI yeah. to get exactly what you're looking for. This would been helpful for uh, product packaging. When I did my product packaging uh, two, or a, year, a year ago now, I was trying to do something like this and I hired somebody on 99designs to do it for me. Um, this would have saved me a lot of money. Yeah. It's a cool idea. Um, okay, we have a few more questions, but if you have any more, feel free to ask them, because once we get to the bottom, we're gonna um, log off for the day, but um, the next cool. question we have here is, um, oh crap, I think we're at the, the end of the line here. Okay, yeah, I'm but just skimming through as well, but yeah. There are some questions about, or some comments here um, about a step-by-step -step tutorial would be great. One question I wanna ask you, Lenny, is, um, if you watch the video, you, you'll know that like, I'm not a Photoshop person. I just don't, I never really learned it outside of a class or two in college, but you're <laughs> amazing with it. But you still use another AI tool to help you generate prompts in mid-journey. Um, can you explain that process? Because to me, I don't know where I would start in mid-journey. Photoshop's easy because I can just type like a caveman, but with mid-journey, there seems to be a whole world to the prompts that you use. Yeah, that that um, I'll just speak really briefly to it because to to start to explain it would just be an entire video, and you'd really need to yeah. to walk through it. I mean, I just learned it by I, I'm not a uh, an expert at Mid Journey at all, but I've I've watched enough videos to get a sense of um, the types of things that you add into the prompts. But yeah. yes, um, using ChatGPT to come up with prompts for Mid Journey is a really cool hack. There is even That's an cool. extension. Um, if I can find it that, oh, actually, I don't know if I've got it here. Um, there's like an extension for, it's called A-I-R-M. A-I-R-M? I think that's the, I think that's right. A-R-I-M. Um, I'll put it in the chat. Extension. Yeah, I'm going to see. A-I-P-R-M. <laughs> A-I-P-R-M for ChatGPT. Cool. And that's a good one. I can actually just drop it in here. Oh, as cool. well. Oh, that's a go. really long URL. Yeah, yeah, just drop that one in the chat. So you install this, then when you log into ChatGPT, it um, basically has this big interface, it's kind of annoying, but this big interface uh, above your chat, bot, uh, chat box, and it gives you a bunch of templates. So one of them is mid-journey prompts. Um, there's also all these others. It's like, okay, you're gonna write a, an article, you're gonna write a book, you're gonna write a YouTube oh, wow. script. You've got all of these sort of templates for prompts and all you do is input your one keyword. So I would choose um, like mid journey, uh, the, the mid journey prompt, and then all I would just type in is like uh, wooden skewer and then mm -hmm. hit enter and then it'll come back with a bunch of options that are like really well thought out and like very creative um, prompts that you can either edit or just paste directly into mid journey. That's awesome, like a template but, essentially. Yeah. Dang, that's awesome. And it's, yeah, it's really great for all your marketing purposes as well. So um, yeah, it, it's great because it's like you can, um, yeah, again, like I love the, the the article ones. If you're trying to write blogs, you can just mm. select that template and then just put one keyword. You can just put like washable pee pads for dogs. Um, and then it's just gonna write a whole article or, about it or like That's benefits cool. of washable pee pads for dogs. Like you write the header and it just writes it for you, but in a, it gives it very specific prompts. So that's awesome. That's a cool hack. That's so cool. And that's a whole other video too. Is like, we just talked about your Amazon listing images. There's yeah. a whole other world out there, specifically for image generation um, that you can use for outside of Amazon. Um, so that's why, yeah, to your point, start testing these tools, start playing around with the free ones, um, use up your tokens, maybe pay for one if it makes sense, but to your point, definitely recommend just testing all these different AI tools. Um, there's a question that came in, I think it's a great question I wanted to get to before we log off here is, 
would you say there's no need to hire a photographer if um, if you're using like a tool like Photoshop, for example? Uh, no, I, I I don't think this is replacing photography. I guess that's like a, a point I do want to make. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a good. Uh, I think it's a like AI is a great tool, and I think it goes hand in hand. Like I don't think it's a replacement. Yeah. It's not. Uh, uh, one or the other, it's like an and. Mm. You you want to utilize both. Uh, will it replace some photography? Yes, I think so. I don't think you might need it as much as, you know, before. Like, you know, our goal when we were setting out was to try to, to get more lifestyle type right. images. And so that's something that we wouldn't now potentially, like we probably wouldn't go out and yeah. uh, pay a shoot for. Um but you you are still gonna need a photographer to get probably like your main product images and to get right. you know the really yeah like intense detail of your product and and all of that like AI at this point isn't gonna necessarily completely generate it right um, and there's things that photographers know especially if they're well versed in Amazon or e-commerce um, like the psychology of of looking at an image and what people see right away and um, color even. Um, so there's so much to a photographer, what they do outside of just like generating an image. So for that reason alone, I would recommend still, to your point, hiring a photographer, um, if you have the budget, I strongly recommend investing in your images. The images is one of the most important things outside of your price point, but you can't really control that um, as, as you can with photos. So um, marrying AI and photography, I think, is the way to go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I would just say that you might have less of a dependency. There are yeah. some images that you can get away with without a photographer, mm -hmm. but not all of them at this stage. Yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah. Did we get through all of the, the main questions here? I think so. So if you guys have any other questions, again, make sure to put them in the comment section down below once this video ends. That way we do come back and answer your questions in, in the comment section there. So make sure you leave all your questions down there and hit like if you enjoyed today's video and hopefully you did. Awesome, and then what should people watch next, Jake? Yeah, so we have an awesome video, AI related, that is gonna show you 15, I think it's 15, insanely helpful ways to use ChatGPT specifically to help boost your Amazon business. So we'll put that video for you once this ends somewhere over here, um, and then it's also in the video description down below. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we'll see, see you in the, in the next, next one. one. Bye.